Well, let me encourage you uh, real quick. If you don't have um, um, the bread in the cup with you to partake of communion as we finish out today, go ahead and get it right now. And then we'll, uh, we'll be, make sure that we're able to do that all together here in just a little bit. So go ahead, get a piece of, of uh, cracker or whatever. It can be whatever you want. You know, I told people on Sunday, grab a carrot, just something to represent the body and blood of Jesus. Doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's highly symbolic, but it's also seriously powerful. So go ahead and get your bread and cup ready. And then um, we're going to jump right in uh, here right now. All right, so we're talking about fasting, and today I want to talk to you about um, the power over temptation. Now, we know from Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 4, that Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days. And so Jesus prays and fasts for 40 days. He gets tempted by the enemy. And what the scripture records for us, it's, it's interesting to me. The, the enemy comes to Jesus, and right away after 40 days of fasting, the enemy comes and says, hey, why don't you turn this um, stone into bread? So he's appealing to his hunger, to his appetite, his desire, and, um, and Jesus responds and says what? Man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus quotes Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Well, then the enemy comes and takes him up on the pinnacle of the temple and says, go ahead and throw yourself down off of the temple because, and now the devil quotes the word. The devil quotes the word and says um, that, you know, uh, God will give his angels charge over you and the angels shall bear you up in their hands and protect you. And so then Jesus goes back and quotes from Deuteronomy 6.16 and says, hey, it's not right to tempt the Lord your God. And then finally, the devil comes one more time, a third time, and, and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and all of their glory and, and communicates to Jesus, all of this worldly glory has been given to me. And he said, I give it to whoever I want. And then Jesus, of course, responds and says, listen, I'm not going to worship you uh, because it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God only and serve him. Again, Jesus quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20. So a couple things here. When temptation comes our way, it really could be summarized by, by saying this. G the enemy of our soul appeals to the lusts of our flesh, our hungers, our appetites, and our desires. The, the lust of our eyes. Here's the glory of the kingdoms of the world. And it can all be yours. Look at how awesome this could be if you just had all this material stuff. So... The enemy appeals to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and then the pride of life. This is from 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. What's the pride of life? Go ahead and operate as an independent self. Go ahead and throw yourself off of, off of the temple and, and do, do what you want to do, uh, independent of what God's will would be. Just go ahead and kind of be your own God. And so it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life where Jesus is tempted by the devil. How does Jesus respond to that temptation? He responds by quoting the word of God. So what does that tell me about fasting? It tells me this. Fasting doesn't guarantee that I'm never going to face temptation. In fact, fasting in the life of Jesus attracted the temptation of the enemy. Then it also tells me if I'm going to overcome temptation in my life, when the enemy comes in strong, I've got to be someone who gives myself to fasting and to the believing, the quoting of the word of God over whatever that temptation might be, whether it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. Remember, it was just a couple chapters later from Matthew 4 when the temptation happened to Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus taught us to pray. What did he say? Pray, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so the evil that temptation is, Jesus gives us his word and his promise for us to pray. Lord, deliver us from that. And then finally, one more scripture I want to share with you this morning about temptation the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 13, tells us what? No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. In other words, whatever you're tempted with, 
Don't allow the devil to tell you, ooh, you're the only one that's ever faced this and this is harder on you than anybody else. No, 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 no. Here's the deal. The temptation that you're facing, that I'm facing, has been faced by everybody else in the course of human history. So we're not facing anything that anybody else hasn't. And here's what God promises. In the midst of that common temptation, he will provide a way of escape. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. So beloved, as we pray, as we fast, there's no guarantee that this is gonna repel the enemy. In fact, it may attract him. But as it attracts him to our circumstances and as he might bring various temptations, let's make sure, let's make sure we fight him with the word of God and the promises of God. Let's continue to fast and pray and let's be more than conquerors, more than overcomers through Christ who gives us strength. So I don't know what temptation you might face today, but you don't have to succumb to it. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, who cares? Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. And that's just the truth this morning. That is the gospel truth this morning. We're grateful for that. So let's partake of communion now together. And um, let's, let's pray and believe that as we go into this day today, day four of our fast, that we're gonna have victory over temptation. Does that sound good, beloved? All right, all right, let's pray together right now. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful that through Jesus, we have the victory. We have victor victory over temptation. We even have victory over death, hell, and the grave. And so Lord, today for my friends, I pray victory, victory, victory over them in whatever it is they might, they might face. And so Father, we look to your faithfulness. Now, Lord God, as we partake of the bread and the cup, as we remember the victory over temptation that Jesus has provided for us, we rejoice, we are grateful, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you for not leaving us alone, not leaving us stranded, but giving us power and promises to be victorious and to overcome temptation. We remember you, Jesus. Thank you for giving us the victory. We partake now of the bread and of the cup, and we look forward today to how radically powerfully you're gonna move in our lives to give us the victory. We love you, Lord Jesus. We commit our hearts to you today. In your wonderful name we pray, and God's happy people said, amen. All right, beloved, let's go ahead and partake together of the bread and the cup. God bless you mightily. We'll see you very, very soon. Remember, Wednesday night for our local Tennessee friends, Wednesday night, January 15th, we want you to come out for Before the Throne. Um, we're gonna spend a great amount of time in worship and prayer and pressing in. Listen, if you need to get something you've never got before, you might have to do something you've never done. And so come on out, let's pray and worship like never before, and let's believe God to meet us right there. God bless you, family. We'll see you really soon.